see you, your fears. You chose the cut out crop top and that's exactly what we're going to do. Now we're not going to do this one with a hoodie. I know this is the hoodie edition, but we're not going to do it with a hoodie. We're actually going to do it with this polo neck sweatshirt type thing. It's bright yellow and I think it's going to be perfect for this. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. I am super excited for you to be joining our series of Choose Your Own Upcycle Adventure. You know those books back when you were a kid, Choose Your Own Adventure where you got to pick the ending and if you didn't like it, you could go back and choose another one. This is kind of like that, but it's about upcycling. And we're talking about hoodies, hoodie upcycles. If you're interested in the rest of them, there are three others. They are linked in the description box below as well as the intro video to get into all of them. If you enjoy this series, definitely let me know by hitting that like button and also sharing this video that'll let me know that you like it and then we can do we can do jeans we can do men's dress shirts we can do all kind of stuff in the choose your own adventure series and if you haven't subscribed of course hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing because we're always doing crazy stuff like this all right let's do it all right so today we are going to start off actually with a polo um it is a like heavy like one of those really heavy polos i know that this series is more about hoodies but I threw this one in because um, I want to use this particular inspiration but I'm going to try this on and just kind of see where I want it to hit it's all about where your chest is before I try it on I'm just gonna draw some preliminary curves and see if that works that way I'm a, maybe a little bit ahead of the game we'll see and it's funny that I should choose curves for all of these projects because curves make everything more complicated they really do um but you know when you see something you like you want to try it you can kind of see that curve right there and if i pull on it a little bit you can see that curve hits just right as to where i would want it to hit and so that means when i cut it i want to cut a little bit that way so that i could fold it down and hem it and I almost forgot, before you take it off, take a pin and add it how far you want it to go down. So we decided that I'm gonna cut like right underneath the sleeves and then for the rest of it, we're going to cut. This is why I use soap, cause it does fade over time and you honestly, you really want it to fade with no effort. We'll be cutting there. And then, you know, once I fold it, it'll be there but we're only cutting the front we're only cutting the front not the back so you have to be you have to make sure you remember that i did not remember that on one of the other upcycles in this series all right so now it's time to cut all right so i'm just gonna do a. oh wait oh i almost forgot my seam allowance <laughs> We're gonna need this in a minute, so don't throw it away. Now, we need to cut this straight across the back. Cut just an arbitrary curve on the back in order to just free up this from the sleeve part. We'll go back and make it how we want it to be later, um, exactly how we want it to be later. But that releases me to fold that over and then cut that free. So now we pretty much have our whole top part we're gonna put this to the side for now. That goes with the extra fabric because we're gonna need both of those together. We need to try it on again and we need to figure out how much we need to take it in in order for it to fit snugly. And like I said in previous videos, if you have a dress form, this would be the time to use it. But also, like I said in, ah! <laughs> in previous videos, um, I don't use dress warrants because I want you guys to know that you can do it without it, but I won't promise that you do it without sticking yourself. Okay, so now there is a seam that goes from the bottom and takes care of this pucker here. See how if we take that in, it's going to make it fit nice and snug. So we want to begin to pinch that part and then it goes down. 
and I actually think it's supposed to come up higher. I'm just really trying to avoid the little polo symbol since it's there, you know, I figure I might as well leave it. Um, so we'll see how this works. It may not work in my favor. Is this crooked? All right, so let me fix this in the mirror and then I'll show you once I think I have it even. In general, everyone, like every woman, is not exactly even on each side, which is the argument why a lot of tailors do not turn things inside out in order to fit them. So um, I'm telling you guys this because I know somebody's gonna make this comment. So there's two schools of thought. You turn it inside out so that you don't have to reverse you know, your uh, seams or you keep it right side out because people's bodies are not perfectly symmetrical. So you can make your choice, whatever you want to do, but this is the reason why a lot of people don't turn their garments inside out to fit them. So um, I'm gonna go with it, put the seam, try it back on before I cut anything and then uh, see how I like it. But you might be thinking, how, ma'am, how are you gonna get out of that? I'm actually gonna use this marker and just mark down the side and then I can take those pans out and that way I don't stick myself and I almost forgot that when I have it tried on I'm looking and I can cut this I don't think I'm gonna do like that inside curve but I think I do want to just like take it to the back of the collar like that Ooh, look at that girl's clavicle <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh i'm gonna mark that off and we can cut it uh before we do these Ooh, that's a good silhouette on me huh. all right we are almost ready to sew i hope you guys are ready so what we're going to do is you know you can see that that original line is kind of jagged i just went over it with my pen just to make it a little bit more straight. So you can see that both of them kind of curve in a little bit and go out. So I just go in with my pen, mark, go in, and then just make it straight. Cause this, of course I'm not gonna do that jagged edge with my sewing machine. That's not what it wanted to be. It's just because I was marking over it. So then I make sure it's laid flat, even along the seam. And then I added pins. We're going to go and sew that down the side. We're not gonna cut any of the excess yet. We're just gonna go sew that down the side. It's a slight zigzag stitch just so that, because I'm sewing on stretchy materials and I want everything to continue to be able to stretch. And we're also going to sew these in um, and then try everything on again. I had those pins in there. I just took my pin along the edge and then I could take the pins out and that lets me know where I want it to fold. So if I want it to fold like that, then that means I need to cut, you know, make sure I have seam allowance. So I cut that on both sides and all the way around the back. I'll take the tag out as well. I just don't feel like doing it right now. Alrighty, ooh, fits pretty good snug enough and i can still get it on so i got all the stretch in there and once we start doing the hemming i'll told i'll show you guys how to um, make sure that you keep it stretchy um, i am not showing my hair because putting on all of these hoodies on and off on and off is nuts it's a rat's nest um up there but it'll look amazing by the end <laughs> hopefully but you can see, you guys have probably already noticed that this one goes straight down and this one goes to the side. That's what I was picking up and I didn't know what I was doing wrong. Now I can see it clearly. So I just need, but the the curve, they start off at the same point, but it's it needs to come down like that versus going over like that. And so neither one is wrong like you if they both were coming in like that that would be fine but i do like this one better you can see like it's not picking up that shadow like this one is picking up a really strong shadow so um yeah i want this one to come yeah i want them to come straight down like this one so i'm going to take this one apart probably like up to here and see if we can get it to 
go straight down and then I'll sew that again. Then I can start hemming. And like I said, I'll show you guys how to hem and keep it stretchy. Um, something I learned recently after 50 million years of sewing, but um, yeah. And it's the perfect length for me. <laughs> All right, we are darn near very close to even. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's perfectly even, but I'm not perfectly even. So um, yeah, I'm gonna try on the jacket just to make sure that um, before I hem, that just there's nothing that I need to adjust. So let me get that. All right, so the jacket is going to be worn backwards. And I'm going to hem it so that it comes off shoulder. And then it's going to need to be taken in in the middle. So that it's going to be a middle seam. Um, of course, you're going to add a piece in the back so that it will stay on. It's going to be way up like that. I don't think this changes any of our of what we need to do to hem. So I could just go ahead and hem, but since we're here, let's go ahead and let's do this. All right, so I know this makes no sense, but I think definitely wanted to do that. I like that. I like that. And I wanted to cut a, like cut so that this is open too. So, We'll see. I almost forgot, I, since I am happy with the way it fits, I can go ahead and cut off the excess. All right, so the reason I cut these open, cause I didn't, ha I could have just cut them short so I can serge it, but I think that I'm going to add some top stitching. And since I'm not sure, I'm going to go ahead and serge each of these individually. All right, so um, I finished opening up all the seams, serging the seams, so now I'm ready to do the overall serging, the hem, and get ready to do the hem. Um, you guys will see me serging with a different machine today um, because I will be reviewing several sergers. Um, but in order to do this, I wanna make sure I open up the seams when I am serging. And I'm going to go ahead and do the last serging, which is all around the neck after I take out the tag. All right, so I am using, once again, the twin needle for this. And the reason I'm using this is because um, it keeps the fabric stretchy. So you could do a zigzag stitch. You could just keep the edge surged because surging, that's the reason I serge. That keeps it stretchy as well. All right, so let's start work, working, working, working on this little shrug thing um, over piece. First of all, want to take it in. I think that'll help me to work on it better. It'll be easier. So let me measure how much it needs to be taken in. Um, okay, one and a half inch. I'm gonna sew that down at an inch and a half and it'll be ready for whatever else we need to do with it. Cause then we need to cut off some excess, you know, cut that curve, start folding this down. All right, so I went and I, Serge this just like I did the seams for the tank top part. And now I'm gonna cut the curve. So that's where I want the seam to be. This is gonna be folded over like that. But, you know, we gotta angle it and we gotta leave seam allowance. Now, we need to add a back piece. All right, so what I want is just a replication piece. The reason I'm not talking a lot during this is because I have no idea what I'm doing. Once I get this uh, serge and fold it under, then I'll be able to sew this back piece to it and we'll see how that looks. I'm not sure, honestly, how it's gonna turn out, but I still have another whole piece of fabric if I mess this up too much. So yeah, we're still good in that regard. So the next thing I'm gonna do, just like I did for the other thing, is go ahead and serge the whole, all the edges. All right, since I have the serger set up, I'm gonna go ahead and 
cut this off a little bit and go ahead and search its edges as well. All right, so this is all done. I'll show you, um, I showed you the stitches. I'll show you what it looks like on the inside just so you can have a kind of clear view of it. Yeah, there's actually tops that look like this on the outside as well. Um, you do not need to have the twin needle to do this project, but if you're going to be doing some extra stitches, I didn't mention that there is a whole machine that does those stitches like on the um, inspiration pick. It's called a cover stitch machine. I just learned about it a couple weeks ago and I'm really interested in getting one to see uh, try it out. However, I've heard they're really, they have some quirks. So um, that's my only drawback with that. But yeah, so I am happy with the, how this turned out. So let's work on this. I have it all surged and I went ahead when I was doing this, I went ahead and did the top and the bottom, turn them under and did use the twin needle to hem it. And the reason I did that is because I think what I want to do is put it in place so that once I do this portion, I can go ahead and sew it down once and I don't have to have an extra stitch there. Now, if I'm really smart, before I sew this down, I will slip it over my head and see how it fits. Will I be smart or will I not be smart? <laughs> Just, I just started a whole series called Will I Be Smart or Will I Not Be Smart? <laughs> I get so lazy sometimes. Okay, so we're going to take that over to the sewing machine and then we can add these hems and go ahead and sew that down. All right, so I was smart. I tried it on. I feel, I'm feeling great about how this is turning out. Um, especially this little top piece. Um, if this goes the way I think it is, y'all. Y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. We're gonna see. So, and when you're doing this, you wanna be careful not to stretch. Don't pull like this. Just be, be cool. Be cool, boss. <laughs> All right, I just wanted you guys to see this, how, how, oh, this, oh, this hot sewing gets you, want to make you want to throw the whole sewing machine away. So I am right here. I only have to right here. Out of all of that stitch, I have from right here to right here to go. I run out of thread. But not only that, because I'm doing double seams, it's hard I don't have a whole lot of multiples of colors. <laughs> That's all I have. That's all. That is it. Drop me a comment if you feel me. Woo! Let me go figure something out. I did have um, navy serger thread. And um, my mom just puts hers in a cup. Um, but that doesn't work for me. And I don't have the serger, you know, like threader for a regular sewing machine. I need to just go and put one in my cart right now. But um, yeah, I just hooked it to right here and it worked just fine, so all is well. All right, so I'm so excited. But before we see how it turned out, I want to tell you guys about my free Facebook group where you can share your up cycles and also get inspired by other like-minded, positive, creative people. So check the link in the description box for that as well. I wanted to tell you about my upcycle class. If you are a member of the highest level of my membership group, then you are in my upcycle class and I'm so excited to have you so that you can actually get those up cycles done. So click that join button down below to learn more about that. All right, so let's see how it turned out. Yeah. Why am I the only one who's left in a rain with nobody to hold on to? Ooh. Why am I the only one who's feeling this pain when there should be two of us? And yeah, I know. You guys, ah, oh, this, this, this. <laughs> so silly oh I really like this now granted I 
always, whenever I do a halter, I always cut it too shallow in the chest. And I'm so glad to have that other piece to kind of, you know, balance it out. Um, I'm gonna have to work on that, but I really like this. I really, really do. I also, uh, in the back, I want to make a couple changes as far as like the, it's, right now, I feel like it has wings. It doesn't bother me too much, but I do think there's a couple of adjustments I could make to make it not do that as much. But yes, I love this concept. I really, really, really do. And so I was thinking to myself, that little bolero piece on top, that could be added to other things. Yeah. Like this, yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. This outfit that I have on right now is actually fully, fully from head to toe, even the shoes, upcycle. Yes, I'll list all the upcycles in the description box, but yes, I absolutely love that it can pair with other things. And I'm so excited to see what else I can use it for just to get that pop of color on something that may, you know, just be a monochromatic look or just a toned down look and you got that pop of yellow. I don't give yellow enough credit. Let me know in the comments how you guys feel about this. Is this one your favorite? I think this one might be my favorite. I'm so excited about it and let me know how you would do yours and how you would style yours and definitely subscribe and go in that description box and check out the links to the other videos in this series you will not regret it all right i will see you in the very next one because i know you're about to watch another one bye